state of calm attentiveness in which one's actions are guided by intuition rather than by a conscious effort. Hmm. Are we breathing? Mm. Are we grateful? Always. Are we wolves? No doubt. Mm. No doubt. Are we at peace? That's what I'm working on. Mm. Are we truthful? Always standing in truth. Mm. Never scared of goddamn not being truth. Mm -mm. Die for my truth. Mm. So we in Zen. It's Zen season. So what is Zen? Not the definition that I told you. What is your definition of Zen? Do you appreciate tea? Always. Yes. Before, no. I didn't drink tea. I appreciate tea. Why? Tea tastes good. That is true. So what is Zen? Oof. Zen? It's a, it's a state of being. Mm. But without thinking. Because mm. once you think, that's not Zen. Mm. That's premeditated. Mm. But it's in a state to where you just not thinking, it just flows. Mm. Omniscient. Yes. It's yes. that inner programming. Yes. You ain't got to think about it. It's just. It's zen. Mm -hmm. You know how your body say go to the bathroom. Yeah. It's zen. Yeah. That's true. You know. How can we explain the esoteric and make it simple yeah. for everybody to understand is always through example. True. Always through example. And that's truly what Zen is, is another form of it, is being the example. Being our leader. Being yourself. Yeah. Mm. That's always going to bring you to Zen. Yeah. That's being yourself. True. Every time. True. So, obviously, <sighs> man, the things that throw us off is when we're not ourselves. I won't say when we're not ourselves. There's no time we're not ourselves. I would say is when. We look outside ourselves. We try to be something you're not. Instead of looking inward. Not even looking in. Because that can throw you off. Mm. Mm. You okay. see? It's not even about looking within sometimes. Sometimes it's just about just living. Knowing what you are at the at and being who you are. In every moment. In every moment. You look, I have a just extra type of personality. Where yeah, it's like 
I'm going to wear crystals on my gloves. Yeah. You understand? Like, I'm going to have a lion gold necklace that nobody has. I'm going to have a labradorite crystal on my neck. Under the lion. Yeah, necklace. under the lion. You understand me? I'm going to be wearing a Piscean fish Sankofa type of Kofi. Kofi with the with my lady scarf under. You understand me? Just so I could feel her vibration on me at all times. Like that's my zen. My zen is just accepting who I am. And accepting where I'm at. Like accepting what I like. What's my um what I favor. You know? Yeah. And a lot of people yeah, a lot of people, including myself, and a lot of point of times, I'm going against that. I'm going against knowing, like, I like things to be fly. I like to be fresh. I like to wear crystals. I like to um, burn sage and candles. And you know I got no candles up right now. I like to collect nice things, you know, from other cultures. Uh, I like crystals. Big ones, paws. Then I like, you know, wearing my hats. I like switching out the hats. I like growing my hair out. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the things that are just naturally at my zen, at my core. Cause zen is your core. It's at the core of you. The core is even that realm that's between the soul and the spirit in the physical plane. There's cores and planes beyond soul and spirit. Oh, yeah. You know, that shows in. <laughs> the Omitu. Speaking about that, it's a new season for Omitu. Last season was you season. You season. So what's this season? This season is, is Zen season. Oh, it's Zen season. It's Zen season. Oh, yeah. it's Zen, season. <laughs> Zen season. Zen season. So why are crystals important in terms of Zen? At the beginning of the creation of this earth, and before the creation of this earth, Mother Tainetta, the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, she stated saying that crystals are what the original man and woman used to travel through when we were orbs, when we were just when we were just spirits, when we are in the ancestral plane, crystals are matrices that light can travel through in order to come into a physical and material reality. The wearing of crystals like all crystals, have their own vibration. The same way every person has their own vibration, yeah. crystals all have their own vibration. When you walk into a crystal shop or you walk into my crystal home, you automatically like, oh, that crystal look dope. That's because that crystal is on your vibration. That's the one. He, that's the one that's at your zen, at your core. It called out to you. Facts. It's a, because it's how you were at the beginning of creation of time. So was that crystal, and it's resonating on the same frequency as you because that's the, the that's what you remember. Yeah. That's how you remember it. That's how you remember to feel it. That's how. So the crystal calls out to you. It's calling out to your spirit. That same spirit that used to travel through the crystals to come here to this crystal earth. You understand? This world is one big crystal. It's one big crystal. Right. It's one huge crystal that we call earth. Right. <laughs> That's why the earth produces smaller crystals. <laughs> we call amethyst. We call labradorite. We call tiger's eye. We call uh, malachite. We call um, amazonite. Cornelian. These are the children of the earth. Same way we are the children of the earth. So really it's like by wearing these crystals in, you basically walking in an everyday reflection. 
and you can use those just by you know looking at your crystals or feeling feeling the crystals to tap in at any moment to tap into that space that's in space right the same way our ancestors mm -hmm. were cufflinks crystal cufflinks lapis lapis lazuli body body our ancestors understood something about portals and dimensions you know the body is an organ organ being a musical instrument all musical instruments have resonant frequencies and they give off frequencies that are either harmonious or destructive so to wear crystal jewelry on your organ does what? It's like an instrument yeah. tuning the organ. You understand? So you play beautiful notes. So you play beautiful notes. So you walk around in beautiful notes. True. So when people see you, they know what frequency you on. Oh, he's wearing these crystals. I can already tell that his frequency is on a different vibration. Mm -hmm. Simply it's by the note. it's on a higher note. Simply because he he or she likes these crystals. They wear the crystals. Mm -hmm. You understand? Fact. Alhamdulillah, allow me to. I'm liking this interview. This, uh, uh, what do we call this? This is, this is, it's more than an interview though. You just call this Oh Me Too Zen Season. Zen Season. Zen Season. The Zen State. Right. Speaking about the, names, mm. how you change your name? <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Man. We'll get into it. So it's no longer on poo? What is the name? Because, man, I tried looking up on the gram. Nothing. <coughs> we'll get into that. Man, all right, all right. We'll get into that. You know what I'm saying? I respect it. Let's move on. No. We're going into a love season right now, finding soulmates. You said this before. You posted on the mm. IG story. Yes. I seen it. Posted my lover, my soulmate. That as well, too. You yes. Did. I posted my soulmate, did. And how does Zen and the love of the woman and the love from the woman intertwine with each other? The only way you can find your soulmate is in your Zen state. You see how that intertwines? You see, you can walk around blind, messing with holes all the time. Or you can fulfill yourself and come into your gold mine. The one that is like you digging through your own gold mine. And as you keep digging through your own gold mine, that inner treasure of yours, you thinking that you was looking for money. You thought you was looking for more material things. The whole entire time, that gold mine was digging for the woman that was yours. So you hit your gold mine because you kept digging. You right. didn't stop. You hit your zen and you found her in your zen state. You was on your Shiva. She was on her Shakti. You understand? Right. Shiva found his wife. The story of Shiva is Shiva found his wife is because he was in meditation. You see? He was tapped in. He was tapped in. She came to him. So he just attracted it, really. He attracted it. And then once she came to him, she didn't wake him up out of his meditation state. Guess what she did? She meditated too? She meditated too. While all of the other women that was trying to get Shiva's attention, yeah. they was trying to wake him up. Mm. But he was already awake. He was meditating. He was thinking the whole entire time, these women ain't on my vibration. Yeah. He, he out there. <laughs> yeah. He like, girl, I'm, I'm meditating. Mm -hmm. I don't want you. I'm already at my zen. I'm already at my core. Mm -hmm. You see? So the only thing that's what I want is what I'm resonating on. She came and resonated with me. Yeah. So we resonating together and we, we healing the world through our love. So the woman's always going to match your energy. Always. 
And so the, the energy that you're giving out is what the energy is going to retract. Absolutely. Attract. And men got to stop thinking that they like, they women got problems. Your woman ain't got a problem. She got a problem with you simply not leading yourself and leading her anywhere. You know, the men got to stop expecting for women to lead anyway. She can lead, but that's not what she wants to do. She can, she has to because she's been trained to because no one has led her, you see? But once we start leading again as men, and as you lead, she, oh, it's, yeah, it's gonna take some time. Mm -hmm. But like the messenger said, you know, it takes about three to six months. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Months for what? Three to six months really to make her your wife. Mm. You will know by three to six months, one is if she is your wife, yeah. and then really to make her your wife. Mm -hmm. and he said that a real man or a true man can make any woman that he chooses into the woman of his dreams. Oh, 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 oh. Say that again. Say that again because that just that so, went over my head a little bit. <laughs> so he said that any true man can make the woman that he chooses, mm -hmm. his wife, if you really on your dean. You can make her into the woman of your dreams. You see? So, we tend to go out of our Zen state and go into our material state to correct situations because that's what we've been taught. That's true. Absolutely. We go into an external way. We, tell, we start to, in relationships, we start to tell our woman what she should change. A woman feels. She's internal. You can't say what you should change. She's like, huh? Yeah. I don't speak that language. That's the language of maybe men. Because we move off of that. Like someone can tell us about ourselves. But when women is about love, mm -hmm. with, with, your, with your mate is about love. Are you displaying love? Is love, is love evolving this situation? You see what I'm saying? I can ask that question in almost any situation I'm in. Absolutely. So it's like, but how many people can do that? How many people can honestly say that they are moving in love and not from some other reason? In this world right now, a rare few. A rare or, few. I wouldn't even say a rare few. Just people, not a lot of people in Western society. Because that's more of... Nah, I'm not even Western society, just the world in general, but even the Eastern societies right now, really shedding the light on not moving with love and really just moving with the ego. Right. So I'm going to go with the first answer. It's a rare few. It's a rare few. Moving with love, man. It's, it's beautiful, bro. It's, it's beautiful. I ain't always moving in love. And that's how I know the difference. I know when I was moving in um, besides myself. And as I would get into relationships and I would try to change things about, um, I, I would try to change things about her. Not knowing that that was the wrong way to go. It was really about just, where's the love? Where is your presence? Who are you? You know? And I think that any respectable woman will see that who you are as a man is a direct reflection of her. You see? So it's like, I realized I had to change internally to make a change externally. Because if your woman represents a form of external, then you know that internally, if you can change something about yourself, it's all gonna be automatic shift in her. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, it's gonna be an automatic shift in her. Automatic. And some shifts, again, take time. Take time. Patience. Zen is, is patience. Right. A man and his patience. 
The Zen doesn't depend on time. Mm. It doesn't. Because the minute that time is in that equation, there's no Zen. Patience. Zen is patience. Mm. Patience. Let's be patient. We must evolve. We must grow. We must grow from being selfish into simply being. At first it was you season, mm -hmm. but now it's Zen season. And anybody that's at Zen always bring Zen anywhere they go. You understand? Yeah. So it's like you're not only bringing your crystals. But you're bringing your spirit into the room. You're bringing your vibration into the room. You're bringing your heart into the room. You're bringing your fullness. Every reincarnation and version of you into the room. You and your Zen. This is automatically making people step they, they amplify. You're seeing people amplify. Because you're around and they could tell you've done the work. They could tell you've done the healing. They could tell that you've been in your, your, your zen. You've really been going through it, doing the work. That's why it was important to now take this shift because I realized I shifted all the way into my zen. This is why I was listening to my song, Libations, I'm in zen mode. Unlock my mind, I'm in Zen mode. Taking my time, I'm in Zen mode. Healing with God, I'm in Zen mode. Can't take me out my vibration. I've been pouring libations. My ancestors so great. Just long as I've been praying. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, and that, it, I was just, I remember walking, bro. Taking a walk, listening to my own music, taking me back, showing me like you already there. Sometimes you gotta forget yourself. That's why I went into my own poo. Sometimes you gotta walk into your darkness, walk into your shadow, face yourself. You see what I'm saying? So therefore you can you can know who you are on every level. And so therefore I came through that portal and I found my Zen again. And that's why I found the uh, oh, me too is Zen season. Now that technique right there. Hmm. The world needs to do that. Or just the brothers and sisters listening to that right there right now. Hmm. You just gave a perfect technique to you go should. into your Zen. Go into your Zen. And become your own best friend. <laughs> It's free. It's free. It's free to be your own best friend, you know. It's free. It's free to light these fires. But remember, nothing free. So, with this shift and with this change that you've undergone, mm -hmm. there's going to be times where this new version or this upgraded version of you is going to be tested mm. to really see if you really standing on your mold, if you're in that zone. Mm. What do you do specifically on that test? Because God's going to test you. Mm. When something disturbs my peace, I let it go. I laugh. <laughs> Watch some humor in it. 
find some humor in it. Yeah. Find where the humor is. Because I remember you. I remember you, you test. I remember you. I remember this is what happens when you feel yourself. And when you at your, your Shiva. I remember this is what happens every time that you come into who you are. You gonna get that. So you gotta always find the humor in it. You understand? I don't like, I don't let nothing attack me. I'm the wolf. You understand? There ain't no attacking me no more. I'm gonna find the humor in it. I'm gonna find the love in it. And I'm gonna let go of whatever ain't love and whatever ain't humor. Whatever ain't, ain't true to myself. I, I'm, I'm gonna take a step back. Sometimes that step is, 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 is a split. Half a millisecond. And that's all I need sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I'm going to actually take five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to think. I'm going to think on it. You know? Because some tests require for you to really, really contemplate. True. You know? So, but I'm going to do that every time. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see where I'm at. I'm going to gauge the situation. You know? I'm going to... Uh, that's just, I'm gonna take heed. Every man should always take heed. He should always take heed. Well, I can explain it like this. It's taking into account what you put out into the world. So if I am a, let's say, if I'm a gang member, yet I get a vision from God to you know, do the right thing and to like heal my people instead. And I start to teach on these things and tell people like, we should do this, we should do this, we gotta stop doing this, we gotta stop moving like this. Taking heed would be like really being accountable that once you receive that vision, you step into it and you don't look back. You don't play both sides, you don't choose sides. You see what I'm saying? You choose the right. You choose what's righteous. You choose what's best. Men and they zen choose what's best, what's right, you know? And we move off what's right as much as we possibly can. You're not gonna always be able to move um, and do what's like completely the the fullest of what you can do at all times, there's times where you, you really don't have it. You understand? Yet, we can always do our best and try. I've tried billions of times. I can honestly say that I've tried over and 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 over again, even if I was wrong. You understand? At least I tried as a man. And that's taking heed. Right? You stepping into it. You keep going, taking heed. Like, I take a heed of all this shit. Like, I know what I did wrong. I know what I do right. You understand? Let me, let me take that. Let me shoulder that. Let me hold that pressure upon myself. You understand? And move in that and let that guide me. Taking heed. Stab to the water. Yeah, stab to the water. I like that. Go uh yeah, split in the sea. Like you you see what I'm saying? Stay out to the water, split in the sea, letting that negative and that positive be just the, the path you walk in between. Taking heat. Mm -hmm. Straight up. But you know, I do think no, well, you got another question? No, you go ahead, go ahead, finish your finish your thoughts. I had an interesting thought about the whole Moses thing in Pharaoh. You know, the movie um Prince of Egypt. I was yeah. watching that the other day. About the uh, animated version? Yeah. Hard. You know, one thing I realized about the Moses story is that Moses could have did that better. Mm. Moses, to me, could have did that better. I thought about this deeply. Please explain. 
Moses could have moved better because in the story, Pharaoh received the kingdom from his father. And it wasn't Pharaoh's fault that he was the child of his father. You see? Because Pharaoh was trying to be Moses' friend. That is true as well. And he was trying to work with Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses had this tyrant, totality type of mindset. Like, nah, nigga, this is all it is or nothing. Yeah. But Moses killed Pharaoh's son. That is true too. And then... But I won't say it was directly. It was a lot of negligence on Pharaoh's behalf mm -hmm. because Moses did come to Pharaoh with the truth. True. So on both parts and both planes, to me, it was a lack of communication that could have been established. Mm -hmm. These two were brothers. And if they would just have communicated properly, they both could have had what they want, but now it's like both really kind of lost out. Yeah. Because the kingdom that Moses' people built, they had to leave it. And while at the same time, the people that built the kingdom for, for Pharaoh and his army left, mm -hmm. were gone. So who won in that situation? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody, especially if Moses' people went on to doing the same thing. Because it says in the Quran that the people of Moses, even after they were saved, they went back to worshiping cows. Mm -hmm. You see? Doubting. And doubting. Mm -hmm. So because they didn't have a kingdom, they didn't have land, they didn't have, you see? Mm -hmm. So it was like, what if... Because, and also remember, and I know this is going off and venturing off, yeah, but yeah. it's taking no more than five minutes. But recognize that when Moses received revelation, mm -hmm. it first happened in his dreams. It wasn't at the bush. It happened in his dreams first. He went to the bush, the burning bush. Mm -hmm. Then it spoke to him. Mm -hmm. That amplified his vision. Mm -hmm. Also remember that Moses' vision is based on his level of education. That is true. You see? His level of understanding and awareness. Mm -hmm. His thought process, oh, it's just, oh, let's destroy this shit. Let's mm -hmm. But what if he would have had a vision of life? What if he would have had other visions like of cooperation? Not cooperation in terms of cooperating yeah. with his enemy, but in terms of more so what if he would have went into being strategic? True. You see? Mm -hmm. What if he would have went into being like more like tactful? Tactical, mm -hmm. militant. The greatest generals are not the ones who shed the most blood. You see? Mm -hmm. It's the ones who can win the war through diplomacy. True. So, the, like, you really not in your zen when you gotta raise your fist. Mm -hmm. Or raise your voice. Or raise your voice. You not in your zen. You in your zen when you can be presence, mm -hmm. your presence, your love, your character, your determination. You understand mm -hmm. how balanced you are internally. People can feel it. And it's like we as men think it is gangster for us to shoot. We think that's like, I shoot first, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I take your I head off. You know what I'm saying? I got it on me. We think that's like, that's masculinity. Mm -hmm. It's not. Far from it. You understand? Because all that does is.
we lose another able warrior that's able to help us get up out of this. You understand? Mm -hmm. We lose another Zen warrior mm -hmm. that if he would have just turned that energy inward, let me speak to you, brother. You understand? Or we could fist it. Come on. Because every time after you done fist fight somebody, y'all done became brothers. Everybody that I done fought with my hands, mm -hmm. you feel a little bit more like respect and love for. Mm -hmm. Because you, you get that reminder, oh, he truly has a heart inside that beats blood. Because yeah. you hit him, you see it. Yeah, you with feel it. Gun, you, 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 you don't get that. Yeah, the gun, that you disassociate it. You disconnect it from it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But that's why also we got to get back to wearing our crystals. Because these crystals emanate love. These crystals emanate, like tiger's eye, emanates determination, willpower, and courage. You got to have courage to speak. You got to have courage to communicate. You see, you got to have malachite activates the throat chakra, the heart chakra, which in turn is your courage, is your, is your willpower. Most of the time when people picking up, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They want to take somebody's life and all that really don't know how to articulate themselves and they get frustrated. Right. You understand? Because I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. Man, this nigga make me feel frustrated. I don't like how you make me feel. You see what I'm saying? That's the mindset. I don't like how you make me feel. Right. But that ain't never been no masculine. Mm -hmm. That ain't never been manly. You understand? I ain't never wanted to hurt nobody because they how they make me feel. Like, how, they make, how, you, how you make me feel? You understand? Nah. Have you hurt my family? You see? True. Have you have you have you hurt my people? Mm -hmm. Have you have you attacked my own? My tribe? Have you set up Housing projects and red lines to keep my people from ever becoming who they're supposed to be. See, now that's my enemy. You understand? Facts. My enemy is them people that's 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 using that that that's using tactics against you. And now. And not no tactic of just shooting, it's a tactic of the pen. Exactly. Of the tactic of the pen and diplomacy. And see, but you know, we won't go too deep into that right now. Because this is the season of Zen. It's all me too. Season of Zen. But I, I got to make it be known, you know, because we are beautiful people. And we have beautiful origins. We have a righteous origin. We have a sacred origin. And so I always would love for my people to know who they are, to be in their Zen, because once you realize that, you, you recognize we have the greatest story in this entire omniverse, multiverse, universe, in Terra, in, in Earth, in the Sirius star system, in the, the Dogon, in the, no matter what you want to call it. We have connection to the greatest source of beauty that exists. And that's why it's just time for us to be in our Zen. Straight up. Fire, bro. Look raw too on here. Alright, so you got any examples to give to the people to get into these Zen? Examples. Get into Zen. Okay. Well, first off, get you some Omi 2 crystals. That, that's the highest of recommendation at all times. Get you some Omi 2 crystals. I pray over my crystals. Um, I make sure that all of my crystals are sunbathed. I make sure that all of our crystals are sourced directly from original sources. Omi 2 also, the reason why you want to get these crystals is because these crystals are even going into this vibration right now. That's well, it's going to get you to open your mind up and your spirit. So we pouring all of that 
into the crystals right now. Like it's recording. That's another thing that crystals do. They record your environment. So if you wear crystals, they record the energy on you and they amplify it, especially quartz. Quartz is an amplification crystal. So you want to wear that to amplify your journey, amplify your spirit. You wear other crystals with that quartz crystal. Therefore, those other crystals will be in amplification around the quartz. You see, your phone itself has one huge quartz crystal in it. You understand? It's used for information. So, and we use phones to go into flow state. You see, really that's why people love phones so much because phones are that flow state that everybody is trying to get into by using drugs, using um, sound, but phones help you get into flow state easily. And that's, but it's not a good state of flow state because it's a scattered flow state. And phones really get you outside of yourself. So you want to put down a phone, pick up a crystal. You want to look at a crystal. You want to talk to a crystal. You want to merge with it. You want to wear it. And then the second thing I would say is look at fire. Go, go to a bonfire. Start a bonfire. Light a candle. You know, sit with a sit and look at a candle for like seven minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Just look at the fire. Read it. See what it's trying to tell you. That'll help you get into your Zen state every day. Before you, when you wake up, wake up, read, write, write your dreams, read. This helps you get into your Zen state. Another thing you can do, Qigong, Qigong, the study of self, the study of the body, the study of flow, slow movement. You understand? Slowly. She gone. Activating your meridians. You know? It's just a little bit for y'all. Not too much right now. And also, we want to make sure that we are cooking our own foods this is essential of getting into zen state cook your own food because cooking is creation same way as like you know how art painting is therapy cooking is also therapy so when you cook you're pouring energy into the food when you eat it you're eating practically yourself you're eating your own let's say if you're cooking you're thinking about purpose you're thinking about your goals you're thinking about where you want to go in life cook that into the food stir that into the pot while you dicing up your peppers dicing up your your onions you pour that intention into the food and you eat it and now guess what your body your stomach which is where they get the word God from. Gud, which represents food, which represents God. Food is your stomach. You know how we say, like, oh, my gut is telling me. Mm -hmm. That's your intuition. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Every time you eating out or eating food that you know that you're not supposed to be eating, what you're doing? Taking it away. Throwing off your gut instinct. Throwing off your intuition. So therefore, you need to be eating at home. That's essential for getting into your zen. Also, we want to correct the feng shui in our homes. Your home is your temple. Home is temple. Om. O-M. Home. Om. Home is temple. It starts in the home first. Everything outside will be a reflection of how you treat your home. Is your home clean? Is your space clean? Do you like nice things in your home? Do you, even if you don't have a lot of things, how do you, are you artistic with where you place your things? Do you curate, curate your home? You understand? 
Do you have an altar in your home? All original people really should have altars. You should honor your ancestors and those who have died before you. You should honor the dead. Because they still here, buddy. Energy is not a... What? Energy does not die. It's not a credit nor destroy. It's not a credit nor destroy. So you must recognize that if it's not created nor destroyed, we don't go nowhere, sir. That's why we say if someone passes on, are they still with you? They still live on within you. They do. So you need to have an altar. Right? Every other culture around the world, uh, for some reason, they all got altars. Even in the Catholic Church, in the Roman Church, they got altars. You know, they got altars for Jesus. So where is your altar at? Why aren't you honoring your, your grandma? Why aren't you honoring your great grandfather? That one was the one who helped get your family up out of the slave railroads and things. And honor your folks. That ain't, it's nothing wrong with that. You understand? There's nothing wrong with that. Honor them. I'm asking you to honor your people. That's your zen. Get into your zen. And another thing, let me tell y'all. I'm giving y'all a lot of keys right now. A lot of beautiful, beautiful keys. That's my brother Keys would say. You want to light incense. You want to light incense. You want to breathe in good things, healthy aromas. You don't want a lot of lights, unnatural lights on also. Dim those lights. Let in the sun, open your window. Let the breeze in. Get into your feng shui. Your feng shui is extremely important. Sometimes open your front door, let the wind in. Go for a walk. Take a walk, breathe. And this last one, probably the most controversial one. But sometimes I picture myself dying. I picture my death. I see me die over and over and over and over and over. But then I see me in my highest form, my grandest form of spirituality right after. So what I'm doing is I'm practicing seeing myself being grateful for the life that I'm living. Because I know that any moment it can end, but I want to be as present as possible. Therefore, it's like, I'm not just going to sit here and die while I'm on a computer. No, I'm sitting here making sure that I'm not just in the mundane task of life. I take time to appreciate. I appreciate death. I appreciate life. And I ask God at my inner core. God, I want to live. I'm too important to die. I'm too important to give up. I'm too important. I'm too important. And because I know I'm too important, that's why I can picture my own death. And then I can play around with it. It's like, you know what? I ain't even afraid of that. That's how you get into your zen, because now you're no longer afraid. You ain't afraid of nothing. You're not afraid of death. You're not afraid to live. It's always harder to live than it is to die. Because if you got to live, you got to live. To die, you die. It's nothing else. But to live, you got to take care. You got to take heed. You got to be in Zen. Zen season. Wait. Almost forgot. The greatest one of all. Hold on. Ah.
Don't worry about that. You gotta find your soulmate. The greatest one of all is get to your soulmate no matter what. No more hoes. No more hoes. Let's be wholesome. No more hoes. Let's get to our zen. Let's get to our babies. Let's get to our families. Let's hold dear to our love. You understand? I got a big rose quartz crystal because this represents how much I love. How much I love my woman. You understand? I love my child. I love my world. I love myself. So being your zen. This is my, that's my guide to Zen season. Welcome to Zen season. Oh, me too. A lot, oh, me too. <laughs>